Hello friends and welcome back to the Bodo Show. I'm back to you again in beautiful Greece, Athens, next to the prison where Socrates was chilled for being far too base for the times. And I hope I honor his name and be as base as possible too. But we're going to talk about a bit a spicy topic, which is race and ethnicity, uh, which has a lot of prickly uh, corners. Uh, and I'm going to use this handy dandy chart on racismology. Uh, I found this weird little booklet. I'll try to find the globe for the pre previous stupid joke. I have all highest quality stupid jokes here. So we finally defeated the globalists and got the globe. But here we have another map chart of racism. Choose your fighter. <laughs> All right, of course, this is a, a caricature of a different ethnicities, uh, but it also illustrates the, the demeanor and the topic uh, of race because it's a. Uh, I prefer I prefer cultures over talking about the race, but. Here we are. Unfortunately, Georgia is also pretty. Uh, Georgia and the Caucasus in general is tied to even this racismology chart because uh, the guy who invented this whole four corners of uh, being a goofball did it based on uh, his weird skull collection, which included uh, a Georgian woman's uh, skull. She was an unfortunate part of Middle Eastern slave trade, and he acquired uh, this woman's skull and because he really got horny about his, the skull shape. People are into which stuff, I suppose. European peoples come from the, the same region because our European peoples are beautiful and this skull is the most beautiful example. So because Georgia is in Caucasus, he named all the people Caucasians. And this unfortunately uh, contributed to the Islamic slave trade racism existed prior to that, before Europeans uh, came to the idea of racism plus slavery. Uh, Middle Easterns were into that uh, stuff already. They used this argument, oh, the Europeans consider Augustians as beautiful and superior, so we must kidnap them more and use women to purify our blood and use men as uh, super soldiers, basically uh, slave soldiers of the military. It's okay, I, I'm a bit exaggerating, but it's, it's, it was a horrible historical fact that in late Middle Ages and even before that, but most late Middle Ages too, even up to 20th century, there was a horrible slave trade of uh, Georgians, Circassians, of course, were um, uh, highly targeted, and other Caucasians into Turkey, for example, to be sold uh, as uh, Janissary soldiers, and later from there, sold into Egypt and other uh, Middle East, and, and even into India. We have accounts of Georgian Mamluks fighting in India as well, and becoming high-ranking uh, and the uh, leaders there. But Muslim people today even use the arguments that, oh, we, are, we weren't actually treating them as chattel slavery, how Americans were treating black people. We gave them education, we gave them high ranks in society. But I personally think that the mother that the little Georgi was ripped out from and taken into uh, Baghdad to become a uh, high Mamluk general didn't really appreciate the fact that his son got the highest education and became Sultan's uh, right-hand guard. Uh, and uh, continuing this uh, debate, uh, even to this day, the most racist society on earth, Russia, treats Georgians and Caucasians as somehow inferior and calls us uh, Khachi, Churka, Chornajok, Chornajok meaning black ass, and different more and more racist terms they invent every day to insult us, but we of course do not care and use the greatest insult of them all against them, telling them who they are, Russians. But uh, this is a really funny debate because even the CEO of racism and the previous uh, president of all the biggest assholes, the funny mustache man from Germany, considered uh, Russians and uh, Slavic people in general as not even worth keeping them alive. There was, uh, they were so racist that even a lot of Slavic people wanted to work with them to 
fight of Russian uh, imperial domination they, and they refused and they lost the war just because they hated Slav so much. And this is so funny that modern day, a lot of modern day Russians still uh, idolize the funny German man, uh, even though he was vehemently, vehemently, I think even more than Jewish people, he hated Slavs. But like Slavs consider us Caucasians as inferior or something or other. It's a goofy, silly, stupid topic. It's based on who has the hearts for who and has no basis in logic. But coming back to reality and logic and reason, yes, it is factually true that most European peoples come from the Caucasus, but of course so does uh, Near Eastern people because uh, Indo-Europeans uh, originate from North Caucasus and Yamnaya culture that spread over into Europe and became uh, the peoples that we know of Europe uh, today. And uh, the other half went into Asia, going into India and Iran. Uh, of course, other group from South Caucasus, the Anatolian farmers came from uh, Eastern Anatolia and South Caucasus and spread throughout all of Mediterranean and uh, laid the foundation of Mediterranean culture and agriculture and monolithic and all that stuff. All of those are really interesting topics that I hopefully get deeper and deeper into in, in the future. And of course, uh, even Semitic people uh, are presumed to originate from the Caucasus because um, haplogroups, which is an other complicated topic, haplogroups that are associated with Semitic people, such as uh, J2A, or so there are different forms of J haplogroups, uh, are uh, found uh, really predominantly in uh, Eastern Caucasus, because Caucasus is really diverse in genetics, because even Semitic peoples, such as Jewish and Arabs and others, um, also presumably originate from the Caucasus, because we all know the myth of the flood, the Noah's boat, of course, stopped at the South Caucasian mountains of Ararat, and which all the peoples uh, descended from later, which is, of course, another topic we'll get into. But I wanted to paint a broader picture that, yes, Near Eastern people and European people originate from Caucasus, but I per personally think that Caucasian people have more in common with Europeans because the uh, Near Eastern people that we had in common, the Babylonians, the Hittites, the Mesopotamians, the uh, Medians and Persians and ancient civilizations that existed that we had historical, linguistic and ethnic and cultural connection to does not exist. And modern day form that Middle East takes place, we Caucasian people do not have any true connection to. Of course, some of us a bit do. So there are Muslim uh, Caucasians, of course, and they uh, find kinship with them. But I still think that the kinship really is closest to Europe because of our history, of our culture, of the diversity that exists in Caucasus, of ethnic diversity, the cultural diversity, linguistic and beautiful food and architecture and everything else only adds to elevate European history and culture and people and only adds to their history and to their culture. And that's what I wanted to showcase, of course, going into our uh, cousin society of Greece, which of course I demonstrated how much historical and cultural connection we, we have. Greece and Rome, of course, is the cradle of European civilization that we consider today. So thank you for watching. I hope uh, what I rambled about was interesting. And if you have questions uh, of topics that I, you want me to make dedicated videos about and expand on, please uh, sound off in the comments. Please comment anything. I need all the stats as possible. I need to elevate my videos. And in the future, I will talk about mythology. I have a few projects already pre prepared. And I wanted to use this um, short uh, vlog type videos to create the basis of, of understanding uh, what Caucasus is and how it is connected to European history and culture. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, and please take care.